National syndicalism is an adaptation of syndicalism to suit the social agenda of integral nationalism. National syndicalism developed in France, and then spread to Italy, Spain, and Portugal. France French national syndicalism was an adaptation of Georges Sorel's version of revolutionary syndicalism to the monarchist ideology of integral nationalism, as practiced by Action Française. Action Française was a French nationalist monarchist movement led by Charles Maurras. Topic: <laughs> Background 1900 to 1908. In 1900, Charles Maurras declared in Action Française's newspaper that anti-democratic socialism is the pure and correct form of socialism. From then on, he and other members of Action Française like Jacques Bainville, Jean Rivian, and Georges Valois interested in Sorel's thought discussed the similarity between the movements in Action Française's conferences and in essays published in the movement's newspaper, hoping to form a collaboration with revolutionary syndicalists. Such collaboration was formed in 1908 with a group of labor unions leaders led by Émile Janvion. As a result of this collaboration, Janvion founded the journal Terra Libre. Topic. Beginning 1909. The collaboration between the integral nationalism of Action Française and the revolutionary syndicalism of Georges Sorel began in 1909. The connection was formed after Sorel read the second edition of Morris's book, Enquête sur la Monarchie. Morris favorably mentioned Sorel and revolutionary syndicalism in the book, and even sent a copy of the new edition to Sorel. Sorrell read the book, and in April 1909 wrote a praising letter to Morris. Three months later, on 10 July, Sorrell published in Il Divenir Social, the leading journal of Italian revolutionary syndicalism, an essay admiring Morris and Action Francaise. Sorrell based his support on his anti-democratic thought. For example, he claimed that Action Francaise was the only force capable to fight against democracy. Action Francaise reprinted the essay in its newspaper on the 22nd of August, titled anti-parliamentary socialists topic <laughs> la cité française and l'indépendance 1910 to 1913 in 1910 sorel and valois decided to create a national socialist journal called la cité française a prospectus for the new journal was published in July 1910, signed by both revolutionary syndicalists Georges Sorel and Édouard Berth and Action Française members Jean Variet, Pierre Gilbert and Georges Valois. La Cité Française never got off the ground because of Georges Valois' animosity toward Jean Variet. After the failure of La Cité Française, Sorel decided to found his own journal. Sorel's bi-weekly review, called L'Independence, was published from March 1911 to July 1913. Its themes were the same as the Journal of Action Française, such as nationalism, antisemitism, and a desire to defend the French culture and heritage of ancient Greece and Rome. Cercle <inaudible> Proudhon <inaudible> <inaudible> During the preparations for launching La Cité Française, Sorel encouraged Berth and Valois to work together. In March 1911, Henri Lagrange a member of Action Française suggested to Valois that they found an economic and social study group for nationalists. Valois persuaded Lagrange to open the group to non-nationalists who were anti-democratic and syndicalists Valois wrote later that the aim of the group was to provide a common platform for nationalists and leftist anti-democrats. The new political group, called Cercle Proudhon, was founded on 16 December 1911. It included Berth, Valois, Lagrange, the syndicalist Albert Vincent and the royalists Gilbert Mayer, René de Marins, André Pascalin, and Marius Requier. As the name Cercle Proudhon suggests, the group was inspired by Pierre-Joseph Proudhon. It was also inspired by Georges Sorel and Charles Maurras. In January 1912 the Journal of Cercle Proudhon was first published, entitled Cahiers du Cercle Proudhon. Italy 
In the early 20th century, nationalists and syndicalists were increasingly influencing each other in Italy. From 1902 to 1910, a number of Italian revolutionary syndicalists including Arturo Labriola, Agostino Lanzillo, Angelo Olivero Olivetti, Alsace de Ambris, Filippo Corradoni and Sergio Pannunzio sought to unify the Italian nationalist cause with the syndicalist cause and had entered into contact with Italian nationalist figures such as Enrico Corradini. These Italian national syndicalists held a common set of principles, the rejection of bourgeois values, democracy, liberalism, Marxism, internationalism, and pacifism while promoting heroism, vitalism, and violence. Not all Italian revolutionary syndicalists joined the fascist cause, but most syndicalist leaders eventually embraced nationalism and were among the founders of the fascist movement, where many even held key posts in Mussolini's regime. Benito Mussolini declared in 1909 that he had converted over to revolutionary syndicalism by 1904 during a general strike. Enrico Corradini promoted a form of national syndicalism that utilized Mauritian nationalism alongside the syndicalism of Georges Sorel. Corradini spoke of the need for a national syndicalist movement that would be able to solve Italy's problems, led by elitist aristocrats and anti democrats who shared a revolutionary syndicalist commitment to direct action through a willingness to fight. Corradini spoke of Italy as being a proletarian nation that needed to pursue imperialism in order to challenge the plutocratic nations of France and the United Kingdom. Corradini's views were part of a wider set of perceptions within the right wing Italian Nationalist Association that claimed that Italy's economic backwardness was caused by corruption within its political class, liberalism, and division caused by ignoble socialism. The ANI held ties and influence amongst conservatives, Catholics, and the business community. A number of Italian fascist leaders began to relabel national syndicalism as fascist syndicalism. Mussolini was one of the first to disseminate this term, explaining that, Fascist syndicalism is national and productivistic, in a national society in which labor becomes a joy, an object of pride, and a title to nobility. By the time Edmondo Rizzoni became Secretary General of the General Confederation of Fascist Syndical Corporations in December 1922, other Italian national syndicalists were adopting the «fascist syndicalism» phrase in their aim at «building and reorganizing political structures, through a synthesis of state and labor». An early leader in Italian trade unionism, Rizzoni and other fascist syndicalists not only took the position of radical nationalism, but favored class struggle, seen at the time as radical or leftist elements. Rizzoni and his syndicalist cadre had served to some extent to protect the immediate economic interests of the workers and to preserve their class consciousness. Rizzoni was dismissed from his post in 1928, which could have been due his powerful leadership position in the fascist unions, and his hostilities to the business community, occasionally referring to industrialists as vampires and Profiteers. With the outbreak of World War I, Sergio Pannunzio noted the national solidarity within France and Germany that suddenly arose in response to the war and claimed that should Italy enter the war, the Italian nation would become united and would emerge from the war as a new nation in a fascio nazionale national union that would be led by an aristocracy of warrior producers that would unite Italians of all classes, factions, and regions into a disciplined socialism. In November 1918, Mussolini defined national syndicalism as a doctrine that would unite economic classes into a program of national development and growth. <inaudible> Iberian Peninsula National syndicalism in the Iberian Peninsula is a political theory very different from the fascist idea of corporatism, inspired by integralism and the Action Française for a French parallel, see Cercle Proudhon. It was formulated in Spain by Ramiro Ledesma Ramos in a manifesto published in his periodical La Conquista del Estado on 14 March 1931. National syndicalism was intended to win over the anarcho-syndicalist Confederación Nacional del Trabajo CNT to a corporatist nationalism. Ledesma's manifesto was discussed in the CNT Congress of 1931. However, the national syndicalist movement effectively emerged as a separate political tendency. Later the same year, Juntas de Ofensiva Nacional Sindicalista was formed, and subsequently voluntarily fused with Falange Española. 
In 1936 Franco forced a further less voluntary merger with traditionalist Carlism, to create a single party on the nationalist side of the Spanish Civil War. During the war, Falangists fought against the Second Spanish Republic, which had the armed support of CNT. It was one of the ideological bases of Francoist Spain, especially in the early years. The ideology was present in Portugal with the Movimento Nacional Sindicalista active in the early 1930s, its leader Francisco Rolau Preto being a collaborator of Falange ideologue José Antonio Primo de Rivera. The Spanish version theory has influenced the Kitab party in Lebanon, the national radical camp Falanga in Poland and various phalangist groups in Latin America. The Unidad Falangista Montañesa maintains a trade union wing, called the Association of National Syndicalist Workers. See also Corporatism Fascism Economics of Fascism FASCO Nationalist Anarchism Spanish Trade Union Organization Third position State capitalism <laughs>